Hey y'all, it's Old Pats with Backpacking Florida, and tonight I'm night hiking in the Sunshine State. A couple weeks ago I set out to do the south, uh, the east, and the north loops at the Richland Fire Tower Loop Trails. Uh, I did the south loop and the east loop, came back into the fire tower, man to dry out my gear, uh, charge up my batteries, and come back out to the, uh, to the south camp, hike the north loop the next day. But uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, I was not able to complete the north loop. So I decided I'd come out this weekend. I want to complete the uh, entire loops. So I'm going to come back out tonight and complete the north loop trail. So hopefully we'll get some good backpacking in tonight. A uh, little uh, secret about myself, folks, is I love being on the trail at night. Now, not all trails are safe enough to do so at night, but down here in Florida, uh, a lot of flat trails. Hopefully I won't get in any water, but uh, it's just a matter of looking out for the critters. Not that we really have any critters down here in Florida that pose any sort of danger. Well, with maybe the exception of the panther or the bobcat, perhaps the wild boar, maybe the black bear. Oh, there's the alligator or maybe the rattle-headed copper moccasin. But I think the one I'm most worried about is probably the drunk hunter. All right, y'all, let's turn the gut hooks and see what our route is for tonight. We're going to start out west along the road and then uh, cut into the woods. We're going to be heading in a northwesterly direction. We're going to come across State Road 50, cut across to the other side, and uh, where we'll loop around the A-loop in a north direction. It's six miles tonight, folks, from the Richland Fire Tower trailhead up to the north camp where we'll be staying this evening. And then we'll uh, get up tomorrow morning and we'll finish our route on in. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. So hopefully there will be nobody there uh, so I can show you around the camp a little bit or whatever. But uh, if there is someone there, then of course I'm going to use backpacker courtesy and I'm going to keep it on the down low and I'll just pick up the video in the morning. So I'll see you guys at camp. All right, here we are. Just stepping off the road and into the woods onto the Florida Trail, out into the loop, out into the darkness. Let's go. All right, we've reached the split. So we're now hitting the Richland Hiking Trail north to my right and south to the left. So last time I was out, went to the south and hit the south camp up. It was about a 4.1 mile hike from the fire tower. Now the night going north. And we're following the yellow blazes. A little bit easier to see than the blue blazes at night. That last trail was just a uh, cross trail. Blue blazed. Hiking trail, foot traffic only. All right, y'all, only 1.1 mile in and we're hitting State Road 50. Let's get to the other side. All right, coming up here on uh, Highway 50. Even busy a little bit this time of the night, so I'm gonna look for my brake and I'm gonna cut across here. I'm in the woods here. Oh, armadillo. <laughs> Little guy's making all kinds of noise. All right, it's just after nine o'clock and uh, coming up here on Porter Gap Road. Camp should be somewhere just past this. Uh, Richland Tower is 4.2 miles back to the southeast. So let's cross the uh, road here and see if we can find camp for the night. There's a deer. See the eye.
right, y'all, we've reached the North Camp site, uh, 250 feet down this trail. Eagle Scout Project. Thank you, Eagle Scouts. And I've already been back here to make sure that there's nobody back here. So that way I can talk to the camera. No, y'all ain't gonna be able to see very well by the light of the headlamp. All right, so we got us a picnic table, a fire pit, and y'all can't see it right now, but we are right on the lake. And I got me a log to sit down on, so I'm probably gonna start me a fire and uh, set up my tent and then make my home for the night. Hey y'all, I finally got settled into camp here. It's about 10.30 at night and uh, I got my tent set up, got me a fire going, got my bear bag up, and uh, it took me forever to get the fire going tonight. I, I think some of the wood around here around the lake was just pretty damp, uh, dead. But I did find some of these old palm fronds, uh, all the dead ones, they work really good for getting a fire going. So that's just something to remember there if you're in Florida. Uh, the thick barky part of the bottoms of them uh, burn, burn for a while. And you can see I got a pretty good fire going there. And let me take you over and uh, show you home for the night. up the airframe there got it set up with my trekking poles and there's home for the night so a little bit downhill my feet are downhill just a tad bit and uh, I'm not too far off the lake but uh, I try to get away from the edge as much as I could just in case a gator decides to come up in the middle of the night Right, y'all one of the great things about coming out here uh, in the woods backpacking is just to escape get away from uh, the hustle and bustle the stresses of life and uh, as I was reading through the scriptures the other day I, I came across Matthew chapter 14 uh, where Jesus had just fed the 5,000 now I know y'all heard the uh, account of Jesus feeding the 5,000 uh, with five loaves and two fish uh, but we, we look right after he'd fed the 5,000. And uh, it says here in verse 22, it says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So we see there that Jesus is sending his multitudes away, uh, the 5,000 after he fed them. He sent them away. And he sent the disciples over on a ship before him to the other side of the sea. Now what Jesus was doing here was getting alone, uh, getting, getting off by himself. And the next verse says, As when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So when I come out here, folks, uh, a lot of times it's just to get away. Uh, to get away from others, just to get alone. Now, I like to backpack with others, but there's a, something special about solo backpacking and getting out here alone, all by yourself, and just having time alone with God. And just as Jesus got alone with the Father and went up to the mountain to pray, it's something special to come out here in God's creation and to get alone with God, to get into His Word and to pray and just to enjoy his creation. So with that being said, folks, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn in for the night and uh, spend some time alone with the Father, time in the Word, time in prayer, and I will catch you all in the morning.
Hey, good morning, y'all. Here I am at the North Camp, and uh, I got in last night, of course. I said about 9.30, got camp set up at 10.30. It was dark, so I didn't have a, uh, y'all didn't get a real good look at what camp looked like. So I'm just gonna show you around here once again. Let me turn the camera. So I've got a fire ring and a picnic table here, and a nice log to sit on. And it's right next to the lake. Beautiful. You see the sun rising over the far side this morning. And there's my little A-frame. I set it up right here, <clears throat> kind of close to the fire and stuff because there was just really no good flat spots to set it. Uh, that's downhill a little bit with my feet. And not to mention, uh, my concern was the, the big oaks. Some of these limbs on some of these look like they could be dead. So I figured if anything, if any of them fell from this one right here, it would hit this one, the main of it, before it would hit me. So I kind of tucked myself almost underneath the main, but not underneath the main uh, trunk of that one. And I'm pretty close to the, the approach trail coming into camp. So somebody would have basically just run right into me, but seemed to be the safest place I could set up. Speaking about this little Eclipse A-frame, folks, I can't tell y'all uh, how impressed I am with it. Last night, uh, it came up a golly washer about 12.30 a.m., uh, and it lasted a couple of hours, and it just came a-pouring down. And I wasn't expecting to really to stay dry. I expected to be floating. as a single-wall tent, so there's no rain fly over it. It is waterproofed, the material but uh, there's hardly any meshing. The meshing's on both the ends of the A-frame. So there is a little bit of ventilation. It's not really adequate in my opinion, but it's, it's enough that uh, there was no condensation that formed up on the inside. I unzipped the, the in, in vestibules just enough that it pulls a draft. Unfortunately, with the rain coming down, I wasn't able to do that, but I did turn on my headlamp while it was raining and I could see the rain hitting the top of the uh, material and just uh, rolling down. So the waterproofing was great. And I stayed dry in there last night. So uh, for $29.99, well, I tell you folks, you can't beat uh, budget hiking like that. Now it's, as you can see, it's, it's pretty small. So uh, I use my trekking poles to set it up. So I could ditch the aluminum poles that it came with and saved on some weight. And it's it's so small you really can't sit up in it. So what you gotta do is you gotta kinda slide down into it. I've set I set it up, roll my bag out and my um, sleeping mat, and then I unzip my bag before I put it in there. And when I get in, I just slide into it feet first, just like I'm sliding into a box. And uh, there's not much room to move around or set up, but it's a place to keep you dry and sleep at night. And it's uh, only about two and a half pounds pack weight. So uh, compared to like a Z-Pax tent, you know, them things, they're roomy, they're great, but uh, they're, they're just outside of my budget right now. So this is what I find at uh, Bass Pro for $29.99, and this is what I went for, the Eclipse A-Frame.
All right, y'all. So let's look at gut hooks for today's route. So we're leaving the north camp this morning, and we are heading southeast until we get around to about the uh, 3 o'clock position there on your screen. And then we're going to cut uh, west-southwest back to the trailhead on the Blue Blaze Trail. So that's going to be about 7.7 .7 miles a day. Easy day. Alright folks, it looks like the blue sink here, Blue Blaze Trail, less than a quarter of a mile down that way. So uh, let's go check it out. Wow, check out this cypress swamp. I'm having 80s flashbacks to the swamp man. Wow, y'all, would you look at the size of that sinkhole? That is a large sinkhole. Looks like it's got a lot of fish out there flopping around. Sometimes it's worth it just to get off the main trail and take one of these little short blue blazes for the scenery. <laughs> Yeah, looks like we come across a little black racer on the trail. Let's see if I can just get him off the trail. 
There he goes. Boy, he's fast. Well, the sound of civilization again as we're coming up on State Road 50. Fixing to cross back over to the east side of the North Loop. Well, it's time to make a break. Slip back off into the woods, away from the hustle and bustle. And there's a second black racer come across today. He's just out here sunning on the path. And uh, in order to keep from getting bit here, I'm just going to kind of scatter him off the trail here. Go on there, buddy. There he goes. He's fast. Look at that. Big old owl just flew over. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. Right, right there. There he is, right there. You can see him perching in an opening right there. Just sitting up on the limb. He's a big owl. All right, y'all, let's talk blazes for a minute. I heard a, uh, another Florida backpacker uh, talking about how he finally figured out what the blazes meant, that two blazes like this meant there was a junction in the trail. Uh, more specifically, uh, what these blazes mean when you see two blazes on the tree like this is that there's going to be a change in direction on the trail so he is kind of right you know that sometimes they do represent a junction but uh in this case uh, there's a change of direction in the blazes and the top one is to the right of the bottom one meaning the change in direction is going to be to the right so look for your next uh, blaze on the right and then if you look you can see that next blaze just on the tree beyond that next one so, of course, if there's going to be a change of direction on the trail to the left, it's going to be to the left. Well, that is one furry oak. Shows the moist environment down here. Moss and mold. And these air plants just grow on everything. All right, y'all, speaking of blazes, uh, here you've got a trail junction. And uh, we've got two blue blazes. So uh, you can see the sign there. Usually at the trail junctions, you will find signs. It's the main trail uh, going north uh, to left, south to the right. So if y'all remember from a couple weeks ago, if you caught that, the uh, Richland Loop uh, South and East Trail video I put out, I'd planned on doing this north section the next day. I didn't get to it, but uh, at the near the end of the video, uh, you catch that I come along this point and before I jumped over on the Blue Blaze Trail, I mentioned that I was going to be heading uh, from the opposite direction the next day coming in on the North Trail, and that's where I am right now. I'll give you a little glimpse at gut hooks just to jog your memory. And there we've got the two Blue Blazes, and uh, the one on the top is just a little bit to the left, uh, not at the 12 o'clock position but just between the 11 and the 12 position. That's to show that the, there's gonna be a slight jog in the trail to the left. 
and uh, we're taking off on the Blue Blaze Trail. We've got two miles from this point back to the trailhead, so I will see you there. And I almost made it back to the trailhead without getting my feet wet, but unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna have to go through this water to get to a bridge. So things are quite swollen up now. That's a little creek right there. But I don't think there's any way around it. That's all swamp that way, and that's all swamp that way. Now I could take my shoes off and go barefooted, but I'm almost back to the truck, so there's really no point. I might as well just get my feet wet and then get my sandals when I get back. completely underwater right here. Now you wouldn't be hiking the Richland Loop if you weren't getting your feet wet. Like it may be dry from here on out for the most part. Right, y'all. Coming up on the trailhead. Right back where I started. All right, y'all, just wrapping it up for the day. But before I hit the road, I just wanted to get a little something to eat. I get my energy levels back up. And uh, while I'm at it, just a little bit of table talk. A little announcement is that uh, if you stay tuned to this channel, next week, me and uh, Brother Tim are going to hit the Ocean to Lake Trail. And now we're going to do it from lake to ocean. We're going to do it the opposite direction. But we're going to go from Lake Okeechobee to the Atlantic Ocean. So that's about, a, I believe it's a 61.4 mile trail. So we thought with Thanksgiving weekend coming up, it would be a perfect opportunity to do it. I used to, folks used to wait till Black Friday to do all their shopping, but now it seems like they can't wait that long. So uh, the last couple of years, my family's been setting a trend of Thanksgiving dinner, and then they go out and they shop all night. Uh, so Thursday evening, some of the stores are opening up early. They go do their shopping. And uh, while they're doing that, me and Brother Tim are gonna hit the road, head over to Lake Okeechobee. Actually, we're gonna bypass Lake Okeechobee, go on out to, I believe it's Hobie Beach, and uh, leave a vehicle there. And then 
drive back to Lake Okeechobee so we have a vehicle at each end and uh, then we're going to take off from Lake Okeechobee and uh, I'm not going to tell you how far we're going the first night but uh, we've got our, our plan laid out it's going to be about 20 miles per day uh, a little less on day day number one on Friday because we're going to do some of that on Friday uh, Thursday night but we're going to uh, do that section uh, from Lake Okeechobee through some of the Everglades and out to I believe it's Hobie Beach if I'm wrong then I'll post that on the bottom of the screen the name of the beach but we're going to be going out to the Atlantic 61.4 miles it be a, should be a beautiful weekend to do it and uh, I know me and Tim are both excited about this trip so uh, we'll see you then